Hello everyone, we are going to have a unique lunar eclipse and uh, this is going to be a very technical video so those who want to learn and want to see how transcendental karmic astrology uh, can put into effect and how the transcendental celestial objects are helping us to understand the space-time moment are going to have some fun. This is the London chart. Uh, I decided to use the London chart because most of my students, uh, English-speaking students, are either from Budapest or from London, and those who, who understand Hungarian, Magyar, uh, uh, they can tune in and take a look at the uh, the Hungarian version of the same video. But since um, I haven't seen my students for the last one and a half years, and I really miss them, and it's terrible because uh, obviously I don't want to go into a quarantine and um, just you know, I, I just um, uh, postponed uh, trips altogether because I, I just don't like this nonsense, what's going on. But anyhow, at the same time, I miss you guys. I hope you are watching this video. And here it is for London. So let's take a look at, first of all, let's, let's discuss what is happening during a lunar eclipse. It's very important. As you can see, the sun and the moon are opposite each other. That would be a normal uh, full moon, uh, which occurs every month. But uh, during eclipses, the the umbra of the Earth is slowly covering the full moon, the face of the full moon, blotting it out. Um, if you look at it from a psychological uh, viewpoint, the sun and the moon, whenever they are in opposition, clearly highlight one another. The sun illuminates the, the lunar aspects, your subconscious uh, fully, and the, the moon reflects back to the consciousness, whatever is hidden in the subconscious. So it's already a unique um, uh, an endeavor. But when there is an eclipse, uh, the earth is taking over. What is the earth? Earthly pleasures, your senses, your human senses. So here you have uh, the, the your consciousness, the subconscious, uh, and uh, your your human senses, or you can say uh, mind, body, and soul are really united in a, a lunar eclipse. In this particular one, you have Sagittarius rising, and besides the sun-moon opposition, which we are going to look at in a minute, you have the usual suspects. You, of course, you do have the still the, the Pluto Aries square is still very, very tight, uh, which is dissolved by Jupiter, finally. Okay, so it's easing up a little bit. And uh, we are going to look at all the other stuff as well. Uh, in, just allow me to show you what I, I uh, prepared for you. So this really highlights the main structures in this lunar eclipse. And this is just with the uh, regular object, although I already in, uh, introduced two transcendental celestial objects, which are, pay, uh, which are very important in this space-time moment. And we can here distinguish quite a few important uh, configurations. One is a mystic rectangle involving the uh, Midheaven and the IC, the Ascendant, Descendant, and the Black Moon lit it. I am about to finish my little, uh, Lilith series, so you're going to understand what the Black Moon is and how we can utilize it, but it basically it is the third per turning point of the Lilith myths, uh, denoting clairvoyance, uh, the ability to, to, see, to, to see things from a distance, um, and also courage and stamina in de determination to do the right thing. And this is on the descendant, uh, which represents either your open enemies or your, um, any, your, your spouse or your partner, any kind of partnerships, uh, also contracts. Uh, so um, that's where it is. And it is the, at the apex also of a um, Yod, a finger of fate, which is actually a boomerang. It's a perfect boomerang. You can see that Mars and Venus are in sextile. So uh, the feminine and the ma masculine are united. Uh, Venus is conjunct Astrea. Astrea is the inner karma breaker and destiny changer. This shows that you can actually uh, break old embedded karma related to either your uh, love life or your finances. Uh, with the help of your will, okay, or your partner. Again, Mars can represent a, a young, virile, active male. And uh, the moon is conjunct Sedna, 
And Senna in Karmic Astrology it, uh, describes uh, creation through dissection. Uh, it is whenever it is prominent, you have the ability to understand what is not working in your life and dissect uh, uh, those segments of your life and rearrange from the bits and pieces, something that is more workable and more uh, usable for you. So that is on the moon, uh, just, just by uh, at the first glance. Uh, so this is a boomerang structure. I did not put in the oppositions for the uh, uh, MCIC ascendant descendant uh, to see, to, to, to indicate that, uh, that it gives you a clearer picture. There's another yod in the London chart involving Mars at its apex, the uh, black moon descendant conjunction and the IC. So here you're, you can exercise your will to resolve any problems related to your partner or your home. And there's also a, uh, this is, the, uh, if you look at it uh, closely, this is a uh, Torth hammer, but uh, it also has a, uh, another addition with sesqui quadrate, semi squares and sesqui quadrates. So it becomes a, what I call a Thor's uh, kite. Uh, at the apex of which is uh, the moon, and the anchor point is the sun. So the sun moon um, uh, is, of course, and then the, the mid heaven is the uh, give, gives you the corner. So this is only valid for London. And uh, inside this whole structure, you will see a really unique uh, um, configuration. But before we do that, before we look at that, let's take a look at the transcendental celestial objects, how they open up. Uh, the uh, our understanding so this is the same drawing with some important asteroids centaurs and uh, fixed stars actually in this uh, this portion there are no centaurs so the color coding goes like uh, red is uh, uh, stars and uh, 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 purple or magenta is uh, i don't know how it comes up, up on your screen is the uh, are the asteroids what is immediately obvious in this London chart is that the great attractor is rising. And the great attractor is one of the key celestial areas in karmic astrology. Uh, it, the all three, the, uh, the great attractor, the super galactic center and the galactic center, these are huge, enormous uh, uh, centers of power. And the great attractor is the center of Laniake. Laniake is a cluster of super galaxies out of which our galaxy, the Milky Way is also part, but it's an, an enormous structure. And uh, the great attractor acts like a, a, a black hole, a supermassive black hole, but it's not in fact a black hole, although it does swallow large amounts of, of uh, uh, cosmic material, matter, cosmic matter, uh, but it also lets out things on the other side and it doesn't ha have any event horizon and in order it to be a black hole it should have an, uh, an event horizon and it, this one doesn't. In comic astrology the great attractor therefore represents dilemmas around fate and free will and interestingly enough in, in this chart you do have a mass Uranus opposition and mass Uranus the uh, aspects are always about how you exercise your free will. Mars is will or the will, and of course, uh, Uranus is freedom. So that is why Mars Uranus is always around, uh, you know, free will, the choices and of free will. And then the great attractor uh, signifies that too. So you guys in London, and of course, because it's the heart of the the country, or you you in the UK will have some important choices to make regarding how you exercise your free will in these these times, these very difficult times. On the midheaven, you have astronomia, so one of the muses, uh, signifying the, uh, the chance to use astronomy and astrology at the same time. And Agora, which is the alpha star of the raven, and it's always linked to magic. Mm, yes, black and white magic uh, as well. So utilize magic definitely on. I'm going to put, put this out uh, a couple of days earlier so you can actually um, prepare for for the uh, the eclipse with either uh, the ritual or some magic. Uh, going um, anti-clockwise, okay. Uh, on Mars, you find Chaldea, Chaldean uh, astrology, Chaldean wisdom. 
and Alfeca, which is the alpha star of Corona Borealis, uh, which is linked to feminine joy and feminine power uh, and uh, the uh, ability to enjoy life at its fullest. On, sun, on the sun, you have Cloto, who is the first of the fates. Cloto is the one who is uh, creating, making the, the threads of life. And this suggests that you, you will have the time and the ability to make those threads out of which the fabric of your life can be uh, woven. Also on the ascendant of the London chart, you have Nike, the, uh, uh, the euphoria of victory, the goddess of euphoria, whenever you, you prevail and you, you win. On the Venus Astrea conjunction, you have a fixed on Nanki, which is the um, which is I think the, the gum star of uh, the celestial um, um, centaur Sagittarius. This is not the uh, southern part part uh, 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 centaur. It's the northern portion centaur Sagittarius. And Nanki is a or Nanki. I don't know how to pronounce it again. Uh, is a star that connects the celestial arrow to the physical body of the centaur and it helps it stabilize the arrow so that it can aim properly and shoot properly so it's like okay fine-tune your aims pay attention to what you want to achieve uh, and we have three other asteroids linked to Astrea and the venus and venus helena beauty merlin uh, again magic and hermes alchemy uh, so and also knowledge, wisdom. So that's quite profound, I think. On the IC, you have two uh, two uh, fixed stars and one asteroid in the London chart. You have Odysseus, uh, adventures. You have Alpharats, which is uh, also connected to adventures and uh, loving freedom and movement and uh, and uh, uh, the ability to enjoy life. And Alderamin, which is the alpha star of uh, uh, Cephus, uh, the celestial king in the Cassiopeia Andromeda story. So it's reign and ruling and sovereignty. And then um, I left uh, uh, the, the, the celestial objects, transcendental celestial objects linked to um, the moon last, uh, but last but one, we have Galahad on the descendant, the, one of the knights of the Arthurian legends. So it's, it, it means uh, uh, gallantry and, and knightship and uh, the ability to stand by and fight for a noble cause. And then we have the moon here and Sedna. I already told you that Sedna helps you to rearrange the non-working segments of your life. Phaeton is one of the celestial objects uh, signifying or describing what happened during the Vila Cataclysm uh, 11,500 years ago when the uh, fabric of our our, our being just got collapsed and, and disrupted. So Phaeton is a very disruptive uh, pattern. It usually shows that you need to rearrange stuff, otherwise it's not going to, it's, everything is going to collapse. And Arbor uh, is uh, considered to be one of the worst stars uh, in, in the, the um, um, in the sky, really. Uh, it, it signifies um, the uh, eye of the demon, Agul means in Arabic demon, the demon star, and it has a very, very bad press. And uh, by definition, I would like you to know that fixed stars cannot bring uh, negative things because they, they, up there, there's no negative and positive. They're just being, they're just is. So it depends on us how we utilize it. And Argo re, uh, represents feminine power. It's actually the healing word of, of diff difficult feminine lives. And it gives you power and strength of a feminine kind. Uh, and uh, it actually uh, kind of coincides with the Lilith energy. Actually the Lilith uh, problems, Lilith issues are being healed on Argo. So that's the, uh, that, those are the main configurations, except one, uh, which I highlighted for you completely because I really think it, uh, I find it's really fascinating. This is a harmonica. If you, if you look at it, it has a structure of the two main oppositions and the, the third one, which is uh, the ascendant descendant for the London chart. This is only valid for the London chart, but you do have the mass 
Uranus opposition and the sun moon opposition in every chart for any place uh, in the, on the earth. So you will have this little tiny harmonica right here, but in the London chart, uh, the ascendant descendants are added. So let's unpack this, this uh, configuration. First of all, you do have the sun moon opposition, obviously it's a full moon, the Mars uh, Uranus opposition, it's about uh, how you can exercise your free will. And you have a quincunx between Mars and the descendant, and also the ascendant and Uranus. So that is kind of dissolving the impact of the opposition. But uh, here comes the interesting portion. You do have two quindachile. One is between the sun and Uranus. So there, and the quindachile, the six, 165 degree is about uh, uh, obsession, but also ambition. So here there's a big obsession, either or ambition and or ambition to change stuff, to change and to revolt against either what is ruling us now or someone who is ruling your life or li life in general. And there's also a Mars moon in the Chile, which is not a very comfortable um, issue because by definition, uh, uh, the moon and Mars are not happy with each other at all, uh, to say the least, because uh, the moon is, is the sacred feminine and Mars is the, uh, the, the, the hero who is actually destroying the sacred feminine. But at the same time, Mars moon also can be described as uh, the, the willpower to save your soul. It can also be, or can be translated as be a strong soul, be a strong person, strengthen your, your soul level, strengthen your uh, subconscious. Um, and the Queen of Chile adds ambition to the whole. And of course, it's, uh, uh, it's one of the main features of this uh, eclipse on this, uh, the 19th of November, which is, for some reason, they say it's, it's one of the longest eclipses we can experience. It's not a full uh, uh, total solar um, lunar eclipse in Europe, but you can still, hopefully, we'll have, we'll have nice weather and we can utilize it. And here you have the um, London chart again with the added um, transcendental objects uh, just for this configuration. Again, with Mars, you have Charlie and Pekka, and uh, uh, the Sun has Cloto, uh, the Moon has Phaeton and Arbol, and uh, uh, on the Ascendant, you have the Great Attractor. And the whole, the whole structure is about faith and free will, really. How much free will you allow yourself? What is faith? What is fatal that you need to accept as fatal how can you exercise your your will in order to kind of supersede those restrictions that are put or placed upon us if you want to utilize the the space time uh you can do a little moon magic uh or a full moon magic and uh, uh full moons are always also about fruition something is brewing at the moment and something will come to fruition during this eclipse Let's hope it's a good one. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.